what's Madagascar like in terms of what it was when we were out there? Mm -hmm. uh, in 2001, when uh, five of us missionaries, former missionaries, went out to Madagascar, uh, uh, I went along with Dr. Stan and Kathy Kwanbeck, medical missionary, who has uh, developed and, and was in charge of all of the medical facilities and health facilities, Malagasy Lutheran Church uh, all over the island. Uh, Dr. Elson, Malagasy doctor, and his wife, and uh, pastor and his wife of the Adzeda Lutheran Hospital went out one day. They wanted to show me uh, what's happening uh, in, in some of the primitive villages. Mm -hmm. Uh, these were villages in arid area. They would have to go uh, five to ten miles to get water. And uh, through uh, a, a fun drive uh, world hunger project in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, they were digging wells in uh, a number of these villages mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, there'd be a water supply. We went to uh, six or seven different villages uh, that day. Going to these villages, they're just like villages that I visited back 55, 50 years earlier, probably same as 100 years uh, ago. In each of the villages, uh, the people all greeted us. The leaders of the village pleaded, send us a teacher. Uh, I think of one of the villages that we went into we went by the native shrine as we came in, and uh, we went by where they're digging the well. The, all the village gathered there. Mm -hmm. uh, little children were all around there, and I had my video camera, and I, I would turn th th that uh, so that they would see themselves. themselves. Oh, they'd all, whenever I did this anywhere, uh, uh, mm -hmm. they all gather around. Uh, th sure. th they wouldn't have a mirror, they wouldn't see themselves, so. Uh, well then, there's a figure there had a commanding presence. He was a witch doctor of the town and community. Uh, he was the priest of that shrine, and he was the chief of the village. Mm. And he said, look at these children. They know nothing. Uh, they have nothing. They're going to amount to nothing. Mm. And uh, he said, I beg you to send a, a teacher here so that uh, they don't have to be like children now or like uh, we have been uh, and uh, generation after generation. Chief of the village, witch doctor, priest, uh -huh. said, uh, I beg Jesus to send oh, wow. a teacher. It startled <laughs> our group. They sent a teacher there, uh -huh. uh, teaching them, uh, the children, also teaching them about Jesus. And uh, his whole family has become Christian. Oh, you told me about a need, a need right now for the schools, uh, that the schools will not be opening for the children, for 1,600 children, uh, because there's no money to open the schools. Yeah, uh, this missionary that I mentioned, Steve Littlelid, uh, sent me an email. Here are 25 village schools, one room school, uh, there's no money for the teachers. Uh, they can't start the school. There's an immediate need for $10,000 for starting of these 25 schools, 1,600 children that would be in these schools. $10,000 for 1,600 children to go to school for a year? No, that would probably be six months. Why do they need us to send money rather than the Malagasy government uh, giving them money or supporting their educational system. Why, Madag why Madagascar is, is one of the poorest countries in the world. So even they're, though they have these gems, because I want to make this clear. Former president, uh, his sons huh. had that. He got all the money from that. So th this is a lot of African governments. Okay. True in Madagascar, they didn't overthrow the government. And so it's an illegitimate government that's in control now. They're dependent upon outside resources for their support.